working folk don't have a chance unless we organize. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Tell me which side are you on? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. If everybody would like to take their seats, we're going to start. Uh, my name is Kerry Cook. I'm the president of the Blue Mountain Union Council. And I'd like to thank everybody for attending today, and also the speakers. There's um, people who don't know who we are. We're the Blue Mountain Union Council. We're a community group set up to support uh, unionism and other social issues. We're always looking for membership. You can join the Union Council. We, we can concentrate on one issue where a lot of other groups can't. We can put some resources into it. So if, uh, we're always looking for membership. I think there's membership forms on the uh, on the chairs. Anyway, we'll start proceeding. And I'd like to, Auntie Bell will do welcome the country. Then uh, Trish Doyle will take over and chair the meeting. So, Auntie Bell. On behalf of my people, both past and present, welcome to Politics in the Pump and to Janet's Country. Thank you. Thanks, Annie Bell, for the welcome. I don't know if I'll need this. <laughs> I might just do it just to my teacher voice. Could you speak up? <laughs> I'd like to also acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which the gathering takes place today, um, the Darragh and Gundungaroo peoples, and pay our respect to elders past and present. Thanks, Aunty Bell, for being here. It's good to see you again. Um, I'd like to acknowledge and thank our speakers, Sally McManus, who's Secretary of the Australian Services Union in New South Wales and the ACT, Maxine Sharkey, Assistant General Secretary, Post School of the New South Wales Teachers Federation, and Jessie Sudich, a young Blue Mountains advocate for women's rights. Um, can we just put our hands together? And thank you. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Helen Westwood, who's a member of the Legislative Council in New South Wales, Blue Mountain Unions Council member and ASU member. Thanks for being here. Uh, many thanks to my Blue Mountains Unions Council comrades for yet again pulling together a uh, great topic and speakers um, for our regular politics in the pub. Uh, thanks to Carmel and the Blackburn family for making this venue available to us and supporting the endeavours of the Blue Mountains Unions Council um, and workers in this community. along, as Kerry said, um, without your attendance, these uh, forums uh, wouldn't be successful, um, nor, nor, neither for, uh, food for thought and uh, the activism that we encourage in our community. Um, my name's Trish Doyle, for those I haven't met, um, I'm the Vice President of the Unions Council, um, I'm a member of the Teachers Federation, a casual worker, sole parent of um, two kids and someone who at the moment is adversely affected um, by insecure work. So casual, temping, insecure work. Can people hear me? Yes. Alan? Good. These are descriptors um, of the situation whereby over the last um, few decades a new divide has opened in the Australian workforce. Um, as Brian Howe, AO, and Chair of the 2012 Independent Inquiry into Insecure Work in Australia said, the stories we heard throughout our inquiry were compelling and confronting. No longer between the blue collar and white collar worker, the divide is between those in the core of the workforce and those on the periphery. Says economist Stephen Kapoulis, people who are casuals are generally low wage earners, they live week to week. Workers may do 40 hours one week, but the next week they may only do 10 hours or get no income at all they still have rent to pay. 
they still have um, food to buy and feed their children. About 35% of Australia's workforce are now employed as casuals or Shame. 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 They Shame. usually don't get paid for sick leave, holidays, jury service no. or personal care as leave. They can also have their employment terminated with minimum notice. Casuals are easy and cheap to get rid of uh, when they're no longer required. Uh, his economist says, one part of me says, it's great to have firms with flexibility. <laughs> and some workers are really happy with that flexibility, and that is true. For some people, it works. However, there are large, a large number of people, particularly those on low incomes or those who have young families and large mortgages, who need a sense of, a sense of certainty and a steady income. So casual work has changed from fulfilling short-term needs uh, to replacing long-term positions. Um, having said this, um, it is important to note that casual work suits some people. For example, those who are studying. And some employers actually do look after their casual workforce. And I'd like to acknowledge um, Akama Blackburn and the Blackburn family who in this establishment look after their casual workforce and treat them as part of the family. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. is to challenge the push by the conservative right um, to make more and more jobs that used to be permanent casual um, under the mantra of the end of entitlement and the need for flexibility. <laughs> so today's topic, the casual con job. Uh, Brian Howe again says, we have a message for business and I'd say for governments too, which ignores the rise of insecure work at its peril, a business model that is predicated on short-term policies and profits generated by widespread use of insecure work is unsustainable in the long run. This has been highlighted during the shallow national debate around productivity, in which business groups have attempted to convince us that the only way to increase productivity is to cut wages and conditions. Here in this electorate, Unions Council wrote last year to our federal member to ask about, for just one example, the Green Army um, and what that concept actually meant, uh, what the details were regarding pay and conditions. She is yet to respond. For us here in the mountains and elsewhere, such a program may undermine Blue Mountains, people who are already living with insecure work. For one thing we have learned, and not by our federal member, is that the pay will be half the minimum wage. Today we will hear from three fantastic speakers, three great activists. We'll hear a local casual story, and we'll hear a, um, a particular example in TAFE, and we'll hear about the bigger picture um, around general work insecurity and casualisation. Uh, Jesse Sudich is sitting here on my right. He is a Blue Mountains local. Um, he was employed by Coles as a casual worker. He's got a great story to tell, so I won't actually do uh, more than just introduce him. Maxine Sharkey, sitting next long from Jesse, is the Assistant General Secretary Post School Education with the New South Wales Teachers Federation, and Sally McManus. Um, as many of you would know, Secretary of the Australian Services Union in New South Wales and the ACT. So the format of politics in the pub is each speaker will talk for about 15 minutes or so. There is a short break where we will sell raffle tickets and we've got some great prizes um, where you can buy a drink and then we'll come back for a Q&A session um, with questions from the audience, comments from the audience um, for our speakers.